Hi, I'm Katie Akins with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom. And I'm Alicia Gutierrez with Arizona Farm Bureau Ag in the Classroom. And we are so excited to be here with you today to learn about one of our favorite things. Cows. cows. How many of you guys like cows? They are one of the I most love loved farm animals, I do believe, our cows. But today we're going to talk about a very specific type of cow. Hmm. You want to know what it is? Yeah. What kind? Yeah. Today we're going to talk about dairy cows. Oh. And dairy cows are the cows that we get milk from. Can you guys say dairy cow? Dairy, dairy cow. cow. Very good. All right. So raise your hand if you've been to a dairy before. I've been to a lot of them. Yeah, some of you guys have been to a dairy too. So can you guys tell us what a dairy cow looks like? They have been to a dairy before because <laughs> yeah. they got it. So our dairy cows, or when people think of dairies, they automatically think of those black and white Holstein dairy cows. Yeah. Can you guys say Holstein? Holstein. Very good. Yeah, that one's tricky. And this is one of the most common breeds of dairy cow, especially here in Arizona. And that's because they do really, really well when it's hot outside. And they produce a lot yeah. of milk. So our Holstein dairy cows, they're mostly black and white, but you can also find them with brown and white. Some have more black, some have more white. They're all a little bit different. And that's because their spots are like their fingerprints. So I want you guys to look at the tips of your fingers, okay? Do you guys see the lines all on the tip of your fingers? Those are called your fingerprints. And not one of you has the same fingerprint as anyone else. And that's the same for the cows. The spots are their fingerprints, so they are all different. One of these cows, these ladies, can weigh up to 1,500 pounds. That's 1,000 pounds. 500 pounds. They're pretty good, but as I said before, they're really good at making milk too. When they have babies, of course, they have to have a baby to be able to make milk. Their baby can weigh up to 90 pounds when it's born. That's probably more than some of you guys weigh right <laughs> now. But remember, the mom can be up to 1,500, so 90 is not quite that big. Usually for our Holstein dairy cows, the milk that they produce is the milk that's bottled and put into the jugs at the grocery store, right? That's what we call our fluid milk. So lots and lots of Holsteins, so many facts we could share, but those are probably some of the good ones. Now, if you go to an Arizona dairy, you'll see a lot of these black and white Holstein cows but you might also see some of these ones. These are my favorite. The brown, Ooh, brown cows. cows. Now, who can tell us what makes the brown cow's milk different from the Holstein cow? There's something special about that milk. <laughs> oh, I... It's not chocolate milk. Who raise but... your hand? Who thinks the brown cow makes chocolate milk? Oh. No. no, we know that brown cows don't make chocolate milk because if brown cows made chocolate milk, what color cows would we have to have for strawberry milk? Have you ever seen pink them? cows? Pink I've cow? never seen pink cow before. No. So our brown cows, these ones are actually called jerseys, Jersey. and we love our Jersey cows. You'll notice they're just a little bit smaller than our Holstein cows in size. They do not get up quite so high. They get more at about a thousand pounds, not fifteen hundred thousand pounds so their babies are also a little bit smaller mm -hmm. instead of 90 pounds they're going to be about 60 pounds when they're born just a little bit smaller but they they tolerate the heat a lot better mm -hmm. than the other breeds so that's why we have some of these in arizona okay. and oftentimes on our dairies they will have holsteins and jerseys because as we mentioned before the jerseys milk is really special mm -hmm. now it's not chocolate no. milk oh <laughs> But their milk is higher in fat content, okay? And so that makes it a little bit more creamy for things like butter and, and ice, cream. ice cream or cheeses, okay? And so that's why we'll have a mixture um, on the dairies. So they're a little bit smaller. So we have the black and white, which we called the Holsteins. And then we also have the brown cows, which we called the Jerseys. Now there are some other 
breeds of dairy mm -hmm. cows, but we don't have a lot of them here in uh, Arizona or really even in the United States, but we thought we would share them with you. So the next one is called the Ayrshires. And they are typically what we would call a red and white cow. You see the, the brown color is actually a little bit more mm -hmm. red. They're really pretty. Yeah. I like those. What's another one? Ooh, brown Swiss. Brown so Swiss. these are brown too, but they're a little bit of a different color. Than like the a Jersey, brown you can gray. See. Yeah, they're more like gray. Mouse. I but like their ears. still have those big, beautiful yeah. eyes. And then we also have the Guernseys. The Guernseys, there are actually less than 10,000 of these throughout the world. Um, very good dairy breed, but they're not super popular here. And their milk is actually not white. It's not chocolate either, but it's not white, but it is more of a goldy color to it. And that's because it has a large amount of beta carotene in it or what our body converts to vitamin A. Pretty cool, I like the Guernseys. Oh. And then we have the milking shorthand. Look at this one, look at, look at his mouth. Or her mouth, look at that. Look at those teeth. Her tongue out. I love it. Cow's front teeth are always yep. so cute. The top front teeth. So here in Arizona, let's do a little review. We have Holsteins and we have Jerseys. So our Holsteins are black and white. Yep. And our Jerseys, Jerseys are, are brown, brown cows. Now here in Arizona, we have nearly 200,000 <gasps> dairy lot. cows. And I think the other really neat fact about dairies here in Arizona versus other parts of the country is our dairies are a lot bigger than in other parts of the country. So the average number of cows on a dairy in, say, Wisconsin, right, the cheese capital yeah. of the world, is about 198 cows. Yeah. Do you think we have more or less cows per dairy here in Arizona than 198? That's right, we have a lot, more. a lot more. In fact, here in Arizona, the average number of cows on a dairy is 2,000 cows. Now, why? Why can we have so many more cows on our dairies here than, let's say, a dairy in Wisconsin? Well, in Wisconsin, they have little dairies spread out all mm. over. They have more space. And I think a lot of it has to do with one of those very important Arizona 5 Cs, called climate. Mm -hmm. You see, do we get snow here in most parts of Arizona? Not where our dairy cows live. We don't get any snow. So because of that, our dairies can keep the cows outside. Where in Wisconsin, when it gets cold and freezing temperatures with snow, they have to move the cows inside. Yeah. So would it be easier to keep 198 cows inside or 2,000? Yeah, 198. a little bit less, right? Exactly. And so that's why our dairies here look a lot different than dairies in different parts of the country. Now, we want to show you guys a really cool picture because we're going to learn a little bit more today about dairy cows by watching a video of an Arizona dairy here. But I wanted to show you guys this picture before we even get into the video. And this is called a milking machine. Okay, it's a carousel milking machine. Like if you've ever gone to the mall and climbed on that horse or that other animal that went up and down and around in a circle for $4 at the mall. Yeah. yeah, kind of the same concept. So our cows, when it's time to be milked, they get milked two to three times a day here on our Arizona dairies, okay? When they get milked, they actually walk into the milking barn and they will have their teats cleaned with iodine so that there is no possible way for bacteria to get into our milk. So they're cleaned up. And then on the carousel milkers, the cows actually walk right into their stall on the carousel milker. And it takes about 10 minutes for that carousel to make a complete circle. And while that cow is going around for a ride, she's being milked by the milking machine. She's yeah, pretty she, cool. It goes slow, so it's not super fast. It doesn't make her sick. She's thinking about cow things like... Hey. Yeah, I mean, not a milkshake. Yeah. Not making milkshakes. <laughs> yeah. It's really slow. But these carousel milkers, each one can have 48 cows on it. And at this dairy, they happen to have two of them. So if we have two carousels with 48 cows on each, how many total is that? What do we think? 96. Very good. 96 cows. That's almost 100 cows milked every 10 minutes. 
And when we used to milk cows by hand, it used you could to take, take almost 30, 30 minutes. minutes to milk one cow if it was cooperating. Yeah. So technology is very, very important on the dairy today, which we'll learn about from our story and also our video. Um, one thing to keep in mind is cows can only make milk after they've had a baby. baby. Very good. That's very, very, very important to remember. Okay. All right. I think maybe we should learn a little bit more about dairy cows through our story. What do you think? Mm -hmm. What's our story today? Ooh, Daisy's Dairy Dreams. Ooh. This is about a dairy cow one. who lives on an Arizona, Arizona. dairy. Okay. All right, so show us you're ready. Crisscross applesauce on your pockets, hands in your laps. You ready? Here we go. Daisy's Dairy Dreams. Daisy the cow lived on a beautiful dairy farm in the state of Arizona. Every day, she and the rest of the cows had a great time playing, resting, and eating. Most importantly, they lined up each day to be milked, sometimes as much as nine gallons per cow a day. In the evening, when the Arizona sun slowly disappeared beneath the sand, Daisy did what all the cows do, settled down for a nice night of sleep. But one night, Daisy had trouble getting to sleep. She laid in her bed and thought about what she might have been if she hadn't been a cow. She loved her life on the dairy, but her mind roamed as she dreamed of what else could be out there. A great horned owl flew down from the night sky and landed next to Daisy. It was Daisy's good friend, Saguaro. Daisy, shouldn't you be asleep by now? asked Saguaro. Is something troubling you? Hi, Saguaro, answered Daisy. Oh, sometimes I just think I'd like to visit lots of different places. You know, See what else is out there besides this dairy farm? Hmm, interesting, said Saguaro. What kind of places? Oh, I don't know, Daisy said sleepily as she yawned. As far away as I can travel. How about outer space? Saguaro raised one eyebrow. Well, I don't know about that, but Daisy was already drifting off to sleep. She began to dream of flying through space wearing a spacesuit. She whizzed by strange planets and stars. Wow, I'm an astronaut, or astro cow. Well, something astro. It's amazing. but all the space travel was making Daisy hungry. She settled down on the surface of the moon and looked for some grass. Wait a minute, Daisy thought to herself as she looked around. Does the moon even have grass or corn or hay? But as we all know, there is no grass or corn or hay on the moon. Daisy's tummy started to grumble. She reached into her spacesuit pocket and found a tube of astronaut food. She tasted it. She didn't like it at all. In fact, the taste was so bad that it woke Daisy up from her dream. What happened? asked Saguaro. Bad dream? There's no hay in space, said Daisy sleepily. I could have told you that, answered Saguaro. But there's always food here at the dairy, isn't there? Oh, sure. The farmers make sure we have the best food a cow could ask for. Every day we eat a wholesome diet of corn and hay, 
and lots of other things that cows need. Saguaro suggests that maybe outer space is a little far from the things Daisy loves. Perhaps she should stick closer to home. Yeah, said Daisy thinking, I know the Grand Canyon is in Arizona. I could go there. And what would you do there? asked Saguaro. Daisy was starting to sink back into sleep. I don't know. I'll give tourists rides down to the bottom of the canyon like a mule. I can do the job as good as any mule. And with that, she was back to sleep. She could hardly wait to start dreaming of working at the Grand Canyon, one of the wonders of the world right here in Arizona. And dream she did. There she stood at the top of the magnificent canyon. A tourist approached her and asked her to take him down to the bottom of the rocky gorge. Hop on, chirped Daisy, her first customer. Halfway down the steep and treacherous trail, Daisy started to realize that she's not used to having someone ride on her back. And it was hot. Very, very hot. Do you mind if we take a little break and find some shade? Daisy asked the tourist. It's hot out here. Break? The tourist barked back. No break. I want to see the bottom of the canyon. Besides, do you, any, do you see any shade around here? Daisy looked around and realized that no. There was no barn nor shade trees of any kind to sit and take a rest. Gosh, I couldn't do that. Daisy woke up in a sweat. Is it hot in here? She asked Saguaro. No, he responded. It's a cool night, but even if it were a blazing hot Arizona day, you have this barn here to get shade. Not to mention the fans and misters the farmer put up so you could always stay cool. Daisy thought about the wonderful fans and they always made her feel refreshed after playing out in the hot sun. Well, I just need to go somewhere cooler then, said Daisy as she put her head down, willing herself back to sleep. Do you guys see the thermometer there? The outside temperature is 105 degrees underneath the shade structure with the fans, it can be 67 degrees for our dairy cows. Oh my, said Saguaro, what will you dream of next? The frozen Arctic, she said as she was already forming images of running with a sled dog team. I'm, I'm a sled dog. Sled dog? Yeah repeated Saguaro, but he was now falling asleep himself. Daisy was at the head of the team as they whisked through the snowy drifts. Snowflakes danced across her face, and she was the fastest cow you've ever seen. But soon, darkness settled over the great Arctic. It got very cold as the big blue moon rose into the air. Daisy noticed how all the sled dogs curled up and settled down for sleep, but she was freezing. I can't fall asleep in a bunch of snow, she said out loud, only then realizing she had woken up back in the barn. I don't blame you, said Saguaro, who was now wide awake, dreaming of the Arctic. Daisy looked around at her nice warm bed made of straw and sand. Oh, thank goodness, she muttered. She thought about how well the farmers here at the dairy treat all the cows. They even clean out the cows' beds and make sure they're fresh and cozy. It's very late, Daisy. What is it you really want? asked Saguaro. I guess I just want to do something important, to do something to help the world. I know, a scientist. A scientist? Well, 
You have about enough time for one more dream before the sun comes up and it's time for breakfast. So go back to sleep and get dreaming, said Saguaro. Daisy laid her head down and squeezed her eyes closed. A scientist, she thought again as she drifted back to sleep. And there she was, standing in front of a table full of test tubes, beakers, and electronic gizmos of all sorts. She scanned the table, not knowing the first thing of what to do. And now, she exclaimed in a serious tone, I will create the world's best vitamin. She started mixing this and that without a clue of what she was mixing. Green liquid mixed with purple and started to fizz and bubble. A pinch of some powder from a small bowl and boom! A small explosion filled the room with smoke. Daisy wiped her eyes and looked around. Then she said in an irritated voice, I'd like to wake up now. And she did. She sat there in the cool Arizona night air next to Saguaro, looking very disappointed. Daisy, said Saguaro sympathetically, don't you see? You, my dear, are a happy, healthy dairy cow. You make milk for people to drink. It's loaded with all kinds of vitamins and minerals that people need every single day. Daisy looked at him with a slight smile. That's true. Milk has nine essential nutrients, including protein, and that makes people healthy. Daisy, Arizona has some of the largest dairy farms in the country, said Saguaro, and this beautiful state has over 200,000 dairy cows, and you are part of all of that. Daisy stood up and watched the sun rise from behind the distant mountains. She realized how happy she was on that dairy farm. The only way a cow can produce up to nine gallons of milk a day is to be a happy cow. And she thought about how hard the farmers worked to make sure all the cows were healthy, plenty had, were happy, plenty of healthy food, cooling misters, shade from the hot sun, and a nice clean bed that's soft and dry. And she thought about her important job of producing milk. You know what, Saguaro? I have a great life here at the dairy. I thought you might say that, Daisy. And Daisy ran off to join her friends for breakfast. All right, I hope you guys liked that story. Did you like that story? Did you like that I story? I loved it. I love that story. Daisy's Dairy Dream. She has such an imagination. So many adventures. But of course, in the end, she just decided that, well, she was a superhero because she made healthy, nutritious milk for all of us, which is pretty dang cool. Well, I know we took them on some adventures with an Arizona dairy cow, Daisy, in our mm -hmm. book, but I think it's time for you all to take a real tour of an Arizona dairy with real cows. Do you guys want to do that? All right. Yeah. So go ahead. You're going to take the next about eight minutes and learn about dairy cattle from one of our Arizona dairy farmers. Way we can get this done pretty quick. I'm just gonna need you to line up one at a time. I just got one pail. What's he trying to do? One at a time we can get this done. You can get back to eating, sleeping, whatever you do best. I'm just here to milk. He's gonna try to milk all those cows by hand. I don't know how he's gonna do it in that pen stand in there. What? I'm uh, looking for Mr. Boyle. I heard about the milking job. Well. You look like you're about 85 years behind your time. So you're telling me 
I didn't need to bring this pail and stool. No, nope. we haven't uh, milked them by hand in about, uh, probably about 85 years. Well, I'm willing to learn if you guys are willing to teach. All right, you're gonna have a long day, but if you wanna do it. I'm ready for it, let's go. in an older barn you would have to run up and down milk them okay in this barn the cows come to you let's see the milk comes from up there comes down this black tube into this pipeline okay this pipeline is taking it down there to a receiver all right from that receiver it's going to pump it up across the top of us and down through the center up to the milk tanks and cool it how long does it take from cow to truck Cow to truck? Yeah. Well, from cow to the tank, it takes a, less than a minute. Okay, wow. And from truck, it's, you gotta figure depends. every six hours there's a truck here. Okay, yeah, it just depends upon when they get Six here. to 10 hours, there'll be a truck here. Okay. You'll ship out three and a half truckloads a day. Wow. And each truckload's roughly 7,500 gallons. Now the key to keeping milk fresh from the dairy all the way to the to the stores is to keep it to get it as cold as possible as soon as possible as it comes out of the cow. Okay. So this is our plate chiller. You can feel this. That's the temperature of the milk coming out of the cow, about yeah, 98 degrees. Warm. And feel that. Wow, that's cool. That's uh, about 36 degrees. The Come milk on. comes through our plate chiller here and flash chills it to uh, to, to 36 degrees where it's then held all the way from here all the way to the time it ends up in your refrigerator at home. Well, sure was a good hard, hard day of work today. Well, you milked a lot of cows. Turns out I didn't really need that bucket after all, huh? Nah, milking 3,000 cows requires a little more modern technology than that. Dairy farming's changed a lot in the last 60 years. In, uh, in the 1940s, there were about 16 million cows in the country. Now there's only about 9 million milk cows in the country. But the big difference is, is we're actually producing more milk with those 9 million cows than we were in the 40s with 16 million. Wow. Yeah, our cows have gotten a lot more productive, mainly because of the high quality care and feed that, that we provide for them. Wow, well, I was glad I could help out today. But you're not done. We got more to do. Okay, let's Come go. On. of me how am I supposed to move all this hay from here to there to feed the cows and it's almost dinner time it's really heavy all the way, all the way over there there's like uh, more hay than what, what are you doing well you said it's time to feed the the cows so I, I managed to get this one piece of hay down are we well let me show you how we do it nowadays Okay, let's go. It's better than this. Come on. So, boss, how'd I do? 
Well, you did a pretty good job, really. So what is all this stuff? Well, it's a mixture of forages and grains, uh, mainly alfalfa, corn silage, sorghum silage, all of that we grow right here on our farm, plus a little bit of grain thrown in also. Yeah, I can see the, the individual pieces of corn in here, some other stuff. Most of it's alfalfa. Arizona is a great place to grow alfalfa, so we utilize it quite a bit for cows. So how do you know this is the best stuff for the cow? We actually have a nutritionist who comes out and, and formulates the best ration for a milk cow. Oh, that's good to know. So yeah, my cows have better nutrition than I do, I think. <laughs> get used to that really oh yeah it's manure but it's also a it's also an important part of the dairy how well we got we farm a thousand acres of uh, alfalfa and corn here so we use the manure as fertilizer oh I thought it was just cow poop no nah, manure's got all sorts of uses some farmers have uh, have started to turn manure into electricity well how do they do that well manure gives off methane which can be captured and then converted into electricity or turn into natural gas. Oh, well, I guess manure has its uses after all, huh? It can be an important part of a farm. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I sure did learn a lot, a ton today. I'll be here Thank tomorrow, you. 8, 8.30. That's about what time we get to work, right? 8.30? Oh. Well, what time do you need me at? I think you're going to need to get here quite a bit earlier than that. About 4, 4.30. Oh. like that video? That's one of my favorites. I, like I really it. think the title was pretty clever, whoever <laughs> came up with that. City Slickers, the Udder story. story. <laughs> get it? Udders with a... Okay, yes, we get it. All right. Well, I hope you guys had fun learning about Arizona dairy with us today. I know that I had fun. I had fun. And now I'm kind of hungry for some ice cream and a big glass of milk. Mm, yeah, some cheese. Oh, all the things. All right, my friends, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.